I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and it is time to leave no dye behind. I have some stock solution bottles that are almost empty, but not quite. Um, a hair of Tangelo, a hair of Spearmint Breeze, and then a lot of actually indigo, which seems to have crashed out. That's probably gonna overtake everything, but we're gonna just layer these colors onto some yarn so that way we can clean out the stock solution bottles and reuse them, but also to end up with some pretty yarn in a non-repeatable colorway at the same time. If you would like to learn more about any of the tools or equipment that I use in my videos, I do have affiliate links down in the video description. And there's a whole playlist of these Leave No Die Behind videos that you can go and check out if you want to see other ideas of how to use some leftovers you have uh, to dye some yarn. Today we are also using a leftover dye bath of water that is just lukewarm. I think it had, it had a lot of acid in it. And so for 100 grams of Swish DK yarn, a base that is 100% superwash merino, we already have a lot of liquid in here, which means that as we add colors on, uh, things will spread and move. You can see that our fibers are absolutely floating freely here because it's just 100 grams of yarn. I'm turning the heat on, but we may as well get started. Here's a little bit of some frozen blue. Sometimes based on the age of your stock solutions, the bottles may end up being a little bit stained, so you won't necessarily be able to get everything you see out of the bottle. I feel like I have a lot more of the Spearmint Breeze color than I do the Frozen. Right now, I'm sort of spreading these out all over, and you can see some of it might disappear a little bit, the blue might hit some regions, but we're really just starting off. Sometimes, and now I'm coming in with the Tangelo, when I do something like this, some of these pastels will have a really, really big impact on the yarn, and other times they may not. So I don't really know where we're gonna end up. I do know that even though there's only a little bit of this indigo blue, this is a color that does spread out a ton. So we may see peaks of this below. It's taking me a little bit of time to rinse out each bottle, but I'm excited and I know I'm gonna come with multiple cups of the indigo. Amazingly, I was able to rinse the indigo bottle mostly clean. So now I'm so curious what's gonna happen. because there's particles in there. And so I've only added a little bit and I have multiple cups. Ooh, we're getting speckles because some of those particles haven't dissolved completely. Oh man, that would be pretty cool. Uh, but I can see, and I don't know if you can tell, but I can see that blue spreading out. But let me show you some of these speckles. Yeah, you can see them on camera. Some of those little powders are just sort of landing on the yarn and that is cool. But this blue is definitely spreading. Oh fun. I haven't even moved the yarn yet. And it looks like where this blue is spreading over the tangelo, which is to be fair, a very pinky orange. It is going purple, but the movement of putting the dye on is creating like a lot of movement of the colors and that's just creating something very, very fun. So I think I'm gonna rinse out this little cup just because there might be some particles there. And since we're pretty warm now, I'm gonna reduce the heat. I think I wanna wait about 10 minutes because I wanna move the yarn before adding dye to the other side. And I am so curious if this blue is going to spread further right now or not. And so I wanna get a better feel of how the blue is gonna behave before we continue, but at least right now, and I think we have, I mean approximately, these all aren't the same concentration, but two more cups of the blue dye. So if things continue as we are here, we should get some feeling, probably not from the frozen, but from maybe the green and the tangelo showing through a little bit. And that is really fun. But I think even in those just like two minutes, this blue is just spreading. So we'll be back. This is reminding me of the aquarium colorway. 
even though I didn't use the indigo uh, for that. But the blue, I think, has spread over a lot of our surface area at this point, um, which I think is really beautiful, actually, so I'm not upset about it. Um, but one reason for flipping and moving is that if we had a place that really wasn't ending up with a lot of color and things are so spread out that that's not as likely of an issue. I just wanted to have a chance to add this color in slightly different areas. And again, we're probably gonna end up with a lot of this color all over, but I think that I want to, and there's basically nothing left in this cup, but I think I wanna wait 10 minutes again and then come in and move the yarn and add more color. I really, really like this. It is so subtle. Oh man, you know, it's funny because I'm going really slow about how I'm layering these colors together, pouring it on, mixing it up. And sometimes it's fun to just slow down and take your time with something, even when it's not a primary focus of what you're doing. And other times it's fine to just go faster and try to use things up as quickly as you can. And so it's nice to, it's nice to have the time where I feel like I can go slow and not worry about how things are gonna go. Uh, because I guess it's not the very end of my dying filming day, and so I'm not in a rush to finish up my leftovers so that way I can clean up uh, my kitchen before the kids get home from school and things like that. So, yeah, it's just, I don't know, something about watching colors spread out onto yarn is so unbelievably soothing and makes me so, so happy. But anyway, I've now added on all of the color. So I am going to leave this for 30 minutes to set the color. The 30 minutes are now up. So I'm going to turn off the heat and I will set this aside. I'll let it cool in here for a little bit, but then I'll set it aside to cool so we can wash it. Let's wash our yarn, which is looking very, very blue. Um, I think that the tone of the indigo color is really, really nice. You know, it was some yarn, and actually, maybe I used some of these colors in Hanukkah, uh, last Hanukkah, but they're very, very pretty. But that indigo, I think it just either doesn't dissolve very well when trying to make a stock solution, or it's just a color that spreads. It strikes on the slower side, so therefore it spreads out. But anyway, I'm washing in cool water. I'm not expecting to see any color bling because I've used all these colors before and ultimately there isn't very much color. But then again, that indigo could have had something residual, but I'm not seeing anything come out. So I'm gonna rinse the yarn a couple of times to remove the soap, put it through my spin dryer, and then hang it up to rest. Here is the finished yarn that we created by slowly layering a bunch of dregs from various bottles. And I am not sure if indigo, which is not an acid dye I've used a ton, always crashes out in solution. Um, I don't know if I had mixed it up super, super fresh, if it would have behaved a little bit differently in the bottle and maybe spread less. But I'm so glad I decided to use it because I think that that soft wave of it over the whole yarn is beautiful. I'm not sure how well you can see on camera, but we do have some super, super subtle speckling in there where some of that indigo powder did just sort of settle on the yarn. But then we just also have this all over wash of blue. I love it when the colors play together in such a soft way. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and sometimes when I have a lot of leftover dye I want to use up, I just combine it all and see what happens. But other times it's fun to slow down and layer things in a way that I hope will be soft and just to see how they combine on the yarn. And something about taking a step back and slowing down the process is so, so soothing. I do want to add that 
as much fun as I have throwing together random leftovers onto yarn, it is absolutely okay to save the leftovers until you have something that you want to create with intent. Don't feel the need to use things up, especially if you feel like you would be wasting the dyes or wasting another skein of yarn. I do have the privilege of having so much bare yarn at my disposal to dye for videos like this that I never feel regrets about creating these one-of-a-kind kitchen sink throw everything together type videos. But I also want to acknowledge that for all I say, hey, leave no dye behind and throw all this extra dye at some yarn, that isn't necessarily feasible for everyone. And so I don't want you to feel guilty if that's not something that you can do. These colors are so mesmerizing. And while you stare at the colors, please double check that you're subscribed to the Cabinet Tutorials YouTube channel, turn on notifications, and leave a comment below to let me know what you think of the color or the technique. And please don't worry if you don't love all the colors that I create. I happen to really like this one, but I have some creations that I really, really love and some that I feel a little bit more meh about. And it's okay for you to feel the same way. I have found that so many different people have so many different types of color preferences that uh, it doesn't bother me if a colorway I dye is not your favorite, but I still hope that at least you enjoyed the video. And I do truly appreciate feedback, even if it is critical. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you so much for watching.